Hey everybody, welcome to the 10th episode of People Swap Reporting using PS Query. And the topic for today is how to use unions in PS Query. So far in this series, we have discussed about the basics of PS Query expressions, join and subquery. And today it's time to discuss unions. So in this episode, we will understand what is union. We will see a use case for which we will create a PS query using unions. And then we will see what are the rules which we need to follow while creating unions. So without further delay, let's get started. So first things first, what exactly is a union? Now let's say we have table one which contains the transaction data for purchase orders. Similarly, we have table two, which is another table which contains a different set of transactions related to purchase order. Now, if you clearly see the data present in table one is completely different from data present in table two. In other words, there is no common value between table one and table two data. Hence, the data is completely unrelated. You can think of this as two different sources of data for purchase order transactions. Now, if we have a requirement that we need to create a single report in which we need to combine both of these transactions data together into one single such report. If we have such requirement, then we can use unions. So what exactly is a union? Union is a SQL technique which allows us to combine the unrelated data coming from two different sources into one single such report as you can see on the screen. Now let's see our use case. We have a requirement to prepare a PS query report to include POs created after 1st of January 2025 in delivered PO tables as well as the custom order tables and we have a requirement to include these three fields business units po id and po date now if you read the description carefully we have two different sources from which we have to pull the data for purchase order the first source is the delivered po tables and the second source is custom order tables now the data between two tables is completely unrelated because we have different set of transactions in the PO header tables and we have another different set of transactions in the custom order tables. Since we have a requirement to pull the unrelated data from two different sources and combine them to one single report, this problem statement becomes a use case for union. So now let's jump to query manager and create a PS query using union so let's create a new query let's select our first delivered record as po header let's add the record let's pick up business unit po id and po date and let's give criteria to po date to include po's which are greater than 1st of january 2025 let's view sql let's run the report and we have POs coming from the delivered table, which are created after 1st of Jan 2025. Now it's time to add the second record for which we will create union. So let's go back to query and let's click on new union. So as we click on new union, you would see that it says working on selection union one. That means we are in the first union of this query this also explains that a query can have multiple unions created. Now here, right now, in this query, we are at level union one. Let's say we want to go to the top level of the query. We can click on the subquery navigation and go to the top of the query. This contains PO header table. Let's say we want to go back to the union one. We can again click on this and then click on union one. Now let's add the custom order table. So the table name is custom order table. And since the table, let's select the table 
let's check off. Now let's add the same criteria for PO date. So PO date should be greater than 1st of Jan 2025. Let's click on OK. So if we check the SQL, this is our top level query. This is the union operator because we are using union. And this is our second select query which is coming from the union. Let's click on run. And as you can see, we have successfully created a union in which we have POs created in the delivered tables as well as POs created in the custom order table. Now, there is one challenge. Although we have data coming from both the tables, for example, I can tell you that first three rows are from the delivered table and the next seven rows are coming from the custom table. The challenge is how would you really know whether a particular row of data is coming from which table? Is there a way to know that? Well, there is a way to solve this problem. We will solve this problem by adding an additional column here in the query which will tell you whether the data is coming from the first table or whether it is coming from the second table which is used in the union. So let's do that. For that, I will go to top level of the query select expression add an expression and here i will just add a comment which will appear as a column so to add a comment like text i will include single quotes twice inside the single quote i will say po header table let's adjust the length to include this text let's say the length is 25 click on ok use this as a field inside the fish criteria this is coming at the end so let's move it to the beginning to make it as a first free so reorder sort make it as a first free now let's do the same thing to the table used in union so let's go to union one click on expression add an expression inside single quote let's say this is custom order Table. Let's adjust the length to 25. Click on OK. Now let's use this as a fee and let's move this from column position 4 to column position 1 using the reorder. Now let's view SQL and let's run the query. And now, as you can see, this table clearly tells us whether this particular row is coming from the customer order table or whether this transaction is coming from the PO header table. So you can use this technique to know the sources of your transactions. Now let's talk about some of the rules which we need to follow while working with unions. The first rule is that the number of fees in the top level query and the query used in the union should be same. For example, let's view our SQL. Now this is our entire SQL in which the first section is our top level query and the second section is our query used in union one. Now if you see, both the queries have same number of fields. This is the first fee, second fee, third fee and fourth fee from query, which is the top level query. And similarly in union one, this is the first fee, second fee, third fee and fourth fee. Now what will happen if I go to top level query and then I add additional fee. Let's say we select dispatch method. Now if you go on view SQL, the top level query has five fields and union one query has four fields. Will it run successfully? Let's find out. Let's click on run. And as you can see, this PS query has shown an error because a union requires same number of fees for each select statement. So the rule to remember is that you should have same number of fields in your top level query as well as your union query. The second rule for unions is that the fields in the top level and the union query does not need to have exactly the same name However, they should have same data type.
For example, if we view our SQL in the top level query, the field name for purchase order is PO underscore ID. However, union query, the field name for purchase order ID is PC underscore order underscore ID. So the field names are different. However, both the fields are of type character and of length 10. Since the data type for both the fields is same, this query becomes a valid query. And when we run the query, we can successfully see the result without any issue. Now, what will happen about the column header name? Because the field name is different in the top level query and in the union query. In such case, when we run the report, the report will have field names which are defined for top level query. For example, let's say we go to fields. And here, if we see the heading text for purchase order ID is PO number. When we run the query, we get the same header for this field, which we have defined in the top level query. And the last rule for unions is the length of the fields in the top level query determines the length of the fields in the output. Let's see one example. In our query, business unit is of type character and it has length of five. Similarly, PO number is also a character field with a length of 10. Now what will happen if we interchange the adjustment or placements of PO number and unit? Let's see. So let's go to query. Let's go to our union one. And then let's go to fields. We are following the sequence in which we are first displaying the business unit and then the purchase order ID. Now what will happen if we interchange their order? That means first we will display the purchase order ID in the union and then we will display the business unit in the union. Let's click on OK. Let's view SQL. Now if you see there is a mismatch of order of fees in both the queries because in query one we are displaying the business unit and PO ID but in the union query we are displaying the PO order ID, which is followed by business unit. So what will happen? Let's see. Let's click on run. Now, if you see, we have a second column called business unit, which is defined by the top level query because the second column in the top level query is business unit. Now we are displaying purchase order from the union query in the second column. So if we click on run, we can see that this is business units from the top level query. However, these are actually purchase orders from the union query. Now, the question is why we cannot see the complete 10 characters purchase order and why we are seeing only five characters of purchase order. This is because the top level query determines the length of fee. If we see in the top level query, this position contains business unit fee, which has a length of five. That's why even if you put a purchase order fee having a greater length, which is length 10, it will be trimmed to length five as per the fees in the top level query. That's why when we run the query, we can see only five characters coming from the purchase order. That is the meaning of the rule, which says the fields present in the top level query controls the length of that field in the output. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. If you found this episode helpful in understanding unions in PS query, then please hit the like button because it really motivates us to create such content. And if you are interested in to search people's content, then please subscribe to people's channel. Thank you.